of impossible obstacles and insurmountable odds, our cast faces their biggest challenge yet. To see if they can remember their character's storyline from the last six films. They thought it would be easy, but then they heard it had to be done in 60 seconds. Let the challenge begin! They started out pretty small part, kind of jokesters. Fred and George were really just messing around with their mum's head. I'm only joking. I am Fred. The second film was much the same, and they uh, they played a lot of Quidditch and had a good time with it, I think. And we also saw them at home uh, with the Weasley family. Morning, Weasleys! Morning! The third film was when they discovered the Marauder's map and gave it to Harry. Everyone? Everyone. Where they are, what they're doing, every minute of every day. Brilliant! Fourth film, they decided to take a load of bets at the Triwizard Tournament, and they had very long hair at that point. And also, Harry gave them the money from the Triwizard Tournament, which he didn't want in the time, which they put into money, which goes into the fifth film, where they decided to develop all these sweets and try them out on different kids. Go for another. They get more rebellious and decide to leave school because they'd had enough of Unbridge rule. <laughs> Then in the sixth film, which we're doing now, they decide to open up their shop with the money that Harry gave them and also the products that they sold in the fifth film. And this is where we are at the moment, they're entrepreneurs. So Ginny Weasley first gets introduced with Harry on the platform. Walk straight at the wall between platforms nine and ten. Good luck. And Ginny Weasley is part of a really, really big family with loads of brothers and she's the youngest. And then she kind of starts to kind of like Harry. Hello. That dies down, and then she gets taken over by Lord Voldemort in the Chamber of Secrets. Oh, Ginny, please don't be dead. Wake up! Wake up! She won't wake. This poor Ginny goes weaker. I go stronger. And then she goes in Dumbledore's army. Projecto! And then she goes to the Ministry of Magic. Projecto! And now here she is with kind of becoming Harry Potter's love interest. He thinks he's a normal boy, but he's not. He's a wizard. He's always had these magical powers, and he thought, oh, but he didn't know what they were. He just thought he was a bit freaky. And then one day, a massive bloke called Hagrid arrived and said, hey, you're a wizard, Harry, and a thumping good a night, wager. And it all started from there. And he left his horrible family from before and went into the magical world, which he thought was going to be brilliant, and it was for a while. And he seemed to say to it very, very well. And he's very, very good at it. Gryffindor! Meets Ron and Hermione, and they're his best friends, and they're great. And he's Dumbledore on Sirius. Then it turned a bit nasty when he realised there was a bloke out to kill him called Voldemort. Stop! And so then he sets out on a journey to try and kill Voldemort, and it, it sort of goes on from there. People die, there's lots of bloodshed and gore, but there's also lots of happy things and laughs. I love it a bit of teenage romance and puberty and hormones, and it's just generally brilliant. On the train on the way to Hogwarts, he meets Harry. I'm Ron, by the way. Ron Weasley. I'm Harry, Harry Potter. That's where their sort of friendship sort of starts, and then he has a little bit of a clash with Hermione in the first one. Second film, he rescues Harry from his house at Dursley's in the flying car. That film, they sort of become closer friends. It's not much. I think it's brilliant. It has the basilisk at the end. Um, and then the third film, Scabbers find out that he is a bad person. <laughs> The fourth one, Ron, he's a little bit confused with sort of the way he feels about Hermione. It's one thing for a bloke to show up, but for a girl, it's just sad. I won't be going alone because, believe it or not, someone's asked me. And he goes to the Yule Ball with Padma. <laughs> the fifth one, it's sort of all about Dumbledore's army and they all sort of uh, this big battle at the end. <laughs> and this one, Ron's sort of a bit cocky, so he's got a girlfriend, he's on the Quidditch team. And yeah, that's, that's it. Did it? Yeah. We start with Draco. He's a very evil and jealous child of Harry and all the limelight he's getting. Saint Potter. And people actually think that he's the heir of Slytherin? He just gets more jealous as the years go on and slightly more childish. Demental, demental! <laughs> Draco has a very painful father who put him through a lot in his childhood. Don't boost, Draco. There's no need with these people. 
Slowly he gets to like the fifth, sixth film and he realises that he wants a piece of the action, so he tries to be the Harry Potter of the dark side, if you will. Don't you understand? I have to do this. He fails miserably and then he's ashamed for what he's done, so we shall see what's yet to happen for the character. <laughs> Hermione Granger, Oculus Repair Room. Born to dentist parents, quite strict, kind of brought up quite well, very academic, kind of nerdy, kind of geeky, doesn't really fit in. Then eventually they accept her and she becomes friends with Harry and Ron and she helps Harry through all the devil snare and she comes up with the right answer and she's just really clever and so she's great. Ace team member, she keeps it cool when it's stressful. She gets petrified, she gets like frozen by the basilisk. Then third film, she punches Malfoy, she's really like girl powery. That felt good. She's got the time turner, she can go back and forward in time. That's really cool. She really loves Buckbeak. She really saves the day. Fourth one, Victor Crumb. He comes very kind of handsome, Bulgarian bonbon. She wears a pretty dress. That's meant to be like her big moment. Ron ruins her night and really that she wishes that he'd asked her, but he doesn't get that, so he just ruins the whole thing for her anyway. She cries on the steps. It's really tragic. Next one, she starts up Dumbledore's army and she encourages Harry to stop being such an angry teenage boy and do something with his life. Expelliarmus! And make things better for everyone else. <laughs> This one, she really is starting to like Ron at this point and thinks that something's gonna happen with them and he breaks her heart by going and snogging this really annoying, giggly, stupid girl who likes pink called Lavender. She's pretending that she doesn't care when she really does and that's really bad and that's about it. Is that okay?